Blake, should we tell Dylan? I think we need to. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're the only member of the Fight Boys cast who is all in. <laughs> Wow, that's the most disappointing thing I think I've ever heard from the two of you. And I've heard about, like, you know, your day-to-day -day lives. The most... <laughs>I am not an actual alcoholic. Welcome to Fight Boys, a weekly podcast <laughs> about professional wrestling and not so professional wrestling. I'm the lone voice of reason, the Dylan. Joined as always by the two Alabama fucktars that I've decided to do this podcast with. The plattest man on the planet, Blake Tanner. And, uh, I'm dead. And Uwami Softly. Scotty Moore, um, so how are you so two doing this week? I was hoping it would be not an actual Fuck. alcoholic, Blake Tanner. <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know Blake well enough to make one. that decision. Yeah, so we joke about it a lot because it's not yeah, true. It's not <laughs> right um, at all. Damn it! Well, Blake, the number. Listen, the number of podcasts we did before this, where you held up alcohol in front of the camera for me to see, <laughs> leads me to believe. Well, and now he's just well, staring. At, he's staring well, at an empty glass, like I just somewhere. Yeah. Actually, uh, over the rainbow. Yeah, exactly. Blue birds fly. Actually, I got this tumbler. It's got a D20 on it. It's a okay. real cool thing, and I can't use it, so I just yeah. stare at you it. You will one day. I'm going mean, to make us could. need. Anyways, it holds wrestling. liquid. All you have to do is pour liquid in it, Blake. I could. Uh, um, oh, yeah, wrestling. I should have I should have introduced myself as the as the lone man who's all in. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm no. sorry, dude. Damn I got to go to Atlanta and talk about podcasting and do business shit. It's fine. Um, anyways, do wrestling. business shit. Do business. Is it a, I don't think there's ever been... Dude. It's Scotty is nothing huh? but the consummate shill. Yeah. I, You're nothing... You are the consummate shill. You have to yeah. do that. I, or you die. I don't think there's... What better know. place to shill our podcast than at literally an event designed for wrestling? We are diversifying the portfolio. Blake's gonna be at some podcast that's not about wrestling. Talking about our show. I'm going to be at Dragon Con talking about our show. And then you'll be at All In pretending to talk about our show. I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> that you know that that's how I'm going to yeah. fucking protest the two of you backing out on me. You're just like, I'm part of this show that <laughs> fucking just... sucks. You cool with that? <laughs> it's horrible. Don't listen to it. <laughs> hey, Chucky, how's it going? Don't ever retweet. Did you don't ever, meet ever this follow. Drunk? Hey, 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 Chucky. Hey, you remember? You remember that guy that got you fired from <laughs> GFW? <laughs> yeah. Well, I do a podcast with him, and I want you to know he's the reason why you keep getting those weird tweets. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we hug it out? Can Can we be friends? I know it's you and Trip. Can we? Thank you, buddy. Thank right. you. And then that's gonna be the highlight of my life. <laughs> and... Just hugging Chuck Taylor. The guy's wrestling. Okay, Chuck Taylor. Yep. You need to under you need to understand. If it wasn't for the fact that I got to ha I got to like touch tips with uh with, with Kenny Omega, that <laughs> show in Orlando would have been the saddest time of my life because I I saw Chuck Taylor wrestle, but did not get to hug him. Yeah. Uh the day that the day that you gave Kenny that tip tap. You just tapped that yeah. tip. It was great. So uh, guys it was amazing. Just fucking wrestling has happened and Jesus, Braun Strowman is the number one contender to the tag titles, and that might be my new favorite thing in the entire world. Of course. And anybody did any uh, was anybody watching TNA whenever Samoa Joe held the tag titles by himself? Because this is oddly reminiscent. Uh, oh wait, when's Joe supposed to be back? Wait, Scotty, you know when, when when's Joe's injury table? I have no, no? idea. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to find this play, this time when Scotty, can you look this up for me real quick? I'm still trying to find the time where Blake agreed to go see Mankind talk about getting tossed off the hell in the cell. Uh anyways. You can do that later on your you, This is company time, <laughs> god damn it. Company time <laughs> Your company time. Um So <laughs> Guys, anyway, I'm... the reason why I'm asking that is because I was trying to think of who the fuck would come out and be tag champion with Braun Strowman, and the only person I could see that could make this even more destructive and hateful 
uh, would be would be Samoa Joe. I've heard a lot of people. Uh, I would like yeah. though. I think you're gonna say what I was gonna say, Scotty. Oh, are Go you ahead. talking about Braun Strowman walking with a certain individual? Do what? You oh, just I'm talking cut about out Braun sec. Strowman walking with Elias, obviously. Exactly. Well, walking. You mean the guy Elias... that he murdered last week? Yeah, exactly. Did he murder him last week? Oh yeah. Yeah, so he's gonna tag with him now at Wrestle well, at WrestleMania. Against the Braun need well, see they're gonna be like Braun. They you must need a have partner. some really good strains there in Alabama because yeah. you are high. God as... damn it! I am trying to talk about it. <laughs> you keep interrupting me. Uh, because this is how you do it, it with great storytelling. <laughs> when I have to listen to you too. <laughs> uh, no, this is how you do it. You just have somebody who can. Uh, you, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Fuck it. He's uh, coming in. He says, Braun, you can't do it by yourself. You need a partner. And Braun says, oh, I'm going to find a partner. And then every week, he just brings an unconscious Elias down to the, <laughs> to the ring, plops him off at the yeah. edge, and then just does the match. Well, I like that idea. Oh, that's probably the best way to do it. But in all likelihood, they'll probably do it the same way. Ironically enough, the bar got together, which is, you guys hate each other, but now you're tagging. See what see how that handles, but then they're beloved by everybody. Hold on. So you mean every John Cena tag team title reign? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Take the giant hairy brute and put him with a musical partner, and it'll probably get over. I feel like they're stealing this idea from SmackDown a little bit, but uh, it's fine. <laughs> oh. They are the, well, not the more over, yep. but they're the more likely to be champions Rusev Day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hmm. I, I, can I just say, never have I gone from hot and excited about a new debut in WWE to, oh, she's still there? Faster than Ronda Rousey. Because if they brought well, in Ronda... It's yeah. because they... It's just that they've turned... Brock Lesnar's, like, not real gimmick into a gimmick for yeah. Ronda. Like, the thing that Roman has been complaining about for weeks on end, they've just been like, oh, yeah, Ronda's doing that, too, by the way. Yeah, that's really... Well, no, what was weird was apparently they announced something where it was like, uh, Ronda Rousey... She's she was gonna... gonna show up at every Raw until WrestleMania, yeah, and then she did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she's gonna show up at all the Raws, and then she, did, she missed one. They pulled that article, and they're like... She'll be here next week. Uh, no, she's not. Fuck. Uh, she'll be at that mm, one. Mm. She'll be at the one in Atlanta that me and Blake may go to if I have money. <laughs> well, she, um... Well, I guess that means you're not going. going. <laughs> it's, a. Uh, it's actually gonna get down to WrestleMania, and she's about to do her entrance. And then she's just like, nope, Ronda's not here. Yeah. But then you just get to see a really good Kurt Angle versus okay. Triple it's H. A, H it's okay. Kurt Angle can wrestle Stephanie McMahon and Triple H by himself. He puts Steph in the ankle lock. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> cheering him on. Sending the wrong message about about uh, equality in America. No, no, no. Here's how yeah. it works. Has Stephanie oh, I think that's in the when ankle he... lock. Trips runs in the ring to try to do it. He bends down, picks up, angle slams Triple H as he drops to his back and finally like cinches in the ankle lock. Oh, I thought you were like, as he drops to his back and it finally breaks in half. <laughs> he just, his, his spine breaks in half, exactly. Oh, my bone <laughs> My bone -itis. So, uh, so is Roman over yet, guys? I, is, is he, is he finally, is it, is it there? Have we made, have we made Brock Lesnar a big enough heel yet? Are people cheering Roman? Well. No? <laughs> Surprising. No? How do Dude, we get oh. Roman over? Well, they don't like seeing him on the TV. Have you Let's take him off. Have the you considered TV. keeping him off TV for a year? Mm -hmm. Let's just keep him off TV for a year. Hey, Let's suspend. Have you considered you know replacing him with Dean Ambrose? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have John Cena go out and uh, he'll do some hype stuff. And as long as he's not completely unhinged and gone crazy, he'll do some stuff and he'll be he'll hype Roman, right? No, 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 not even not even a little bit. Like, speaking... If anything, if anything, he's he's calling Roman a bitch by calling the Undertaker out by saying that that lost to Roman last year in the main event of WrestleMania that was supposed to be a retirement match. Yeah. Isn't actually a retirement match. And 
Oh my god. So, uh, how do you guys feel about the rumors that we're going to get Biker Taker this year? Because uh, in order to keep Roman strong, uh, we have to say that he uh, retired <laughs> the Dead Man, the dead man the gimmick. Dead man, but retired. not the American badass. <laughs> and then is former it, JWF it... celebrity champion and soon to be WWE Hall of Famer Kid Rock plays him out to the ring. I'm pretty sure I posted that exact same thing in our group chat the other yeah. night. I would die. Also, in more sad news, uh, Kid Rock, who at one point made a musical version of Cancer, <laughs> um, is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Just more influence of the JWF on the WWE hype machine. They were just like, who do they seem like they like? I don't know. They made Kid Rock their champion, so... Could be that. Oh. Uh... How's that? Hey, hey, qu- a question for you, Scott, Scotty. Uh, how's, uh, how's the Ascension doing? How's, uh, <laughs> how's Rat Boy doing for you? I'm fairly oh, he's, sure. Oh, he's still not on television. Oh, man, falling off the face of the earth, you say. I'm fairly sure that's, they uh, kayfabe that's, murdered. That's... They kayfabe murdered the Ascension. That's, they, we, they did they the came opposite. Back. They did. Hold on, Fashion what if it's the opposite? them. What if everything we do in JWF gets them more... Well, no, because Braun. Braun's our one exception. But fucking Baron, uh, the minute we started promoting Baron in JWF more, he lost his money in the bank briefcase. We start promoting the Ascension, and they have been murdered on television. We are destroying... So what you're saying... So so we need to invite Roman Roman Reigns Mm -hmm. into the JWF. Yeah, exactly. Next JWF. Oh. We have Momoa just like, Curry. That's like that's like old fat voice Roman yeah. Reigns, right? Yeah, yeah Momoa Actually, can is we old have... Reigns. Yeah. Um, well, can we have Scotty? Um, can we have you do Roman in JWF's actual theme music, which is just like that acapella? Biddy, 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 biddy. Hello. I need. My except, no, no. I need you to do Roman Reigns. I, I, I need you to do Roman Reigns' uh, entrance, but it's just nothing but ooh-ahs. It's just ooh-ah, <laughs> ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Oh, no, my name oh. is Ma Moa Curry. Hello. Just go through. You know before you fought him at, uh, shit, Los Trios Tangos, wasn't it, where you fought Momoa Curry? It was going to be Roman Reigns versus Momoa Curry in a retirement match. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, wait, Dylan doesn't have a match. I'm still oh, really man. proud of Los Trios Tangos. That's oh. That was a good show. It was a That's... good show. Amazing things That's happened all around. Oh, that was a good name. I was proud of the name. The oh. show was terrible. It was the JWF. <laughs> it's based out of Alabama. What was the last good thing to come out of Alabama? Um, mm. shit, what's... Oh, fuck. AIDS. I think AIDS came from Alabama. <laughs> I wasn't, no, what was I, the name of shit? There was I live near him because he lives in Jacksonville. It's some old fucking WCW wrestler that lives in that is from Alabama, but I cannot remember who it is. Probably for the best. Um, mm. but yeah, um, back to normal wrestling. John Cena is gonna be in Blues Clues apparently, and I'm really hyped for this. Okay, now all I saw that was he auditioned for the new part in blue yeah no, there was never there was never like a confirmation because i would have heard about that no the grungy reboot of blues clues where steve is just like this big jacked up dude and he's just like i'm about to sit down in my thinking chair and think think oh, did you, think did you see Ro- did you see John Cena was on uh, was Jimmy Fallon? I forget how long ago. I think it was only like a couple of weeks ago. No, this was but, like a few uh, days Jimmy ago, Fa- but yeah, Jimmy... I saw the interview. Where he did... Oh, no, no, he also did a skit, because Jimmy Fallon was doing his insufferable, like, teenage girl character. Yeah, you mean... And then John Cena came out dressed like a teenage girl. <laughs> oh, that's oh, one of the God. things that he He's talked talking about. about. Talking I... about being in the cheerleading squad. Yeah. No, no, I'm no. on the bottom of the pyramid. Pe- <laughs> I'm on the bottom of the period. Oh, they put you on the bottom of the pyramid. I am the bottom of the pyramid. I, I just found <laughs> a... voice uh... got real deep. They <laughs> yeah. pranked him on that, too. You should go back, anybody listening to this, go back, watch that. There's a moment where he was like, I'm going through some changes. He picks up a... I'm really good at throwing stuff. And he throws this pillow at a base. 
And clearly, clearly it was meant to to ha- to break and like make a sound because the there was like a clearly like a whatever. But John Cena's face has that look of like, oh shit, I just broke something on national television. <laughs> There's a, yep. Oh no, one of my uh, favorites. I just found a TMZ article, guys, that says former Blues Clues ho- host Steve says I'm ready to fight John Cena for my old hosting gig. <laughs> Isn't Steve bald now? Yes. Steve is bald and in like an alt rock band. It's really weird. Cause when I'm so sad it can't be a hair versus hair match, so John Cena can finally, finally be as bald as he was meant to. Oh, be. I thought you meant the opposite. It's a hair versus hair, and they actually have to grow out hair if they win- lose the match. John's just like, no, it yeah. comes in curly. I don't know. John Cena John Cena with long hair is just like real. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah, because he did, he did know, like an it, SNL skit where he had long, like, blonde hair and he looked like Fabio. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable with this at all. <laughs> this, is, this is not what I, Where's my... I can't rub my bald spot. Yeah. I, can't, I can't rub the Tip bald spot. Tip cap up. Rub, rub, rub bald spot. Put cap back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fine speech. <laughs> <laughs> Man, has he... I was really honestly whenever they were doing the Roman John Cena program I was really wanting John to do that after Roman said something be like fine speech and then Roman just punches him in the face and then spears him <laughs> yeah exactly and then goes fine speech to you too and then just throws the mic on him so that I can just die I just need that to just die, die. speaking of dying CM Punk's gonna be in UFC again and he's and... gonna die and he's gonna die. I'm gonna root for him, uh, cause you know. Yep. CM now the Punk, fact that he went. But I uh, have. The fact but, that there are like professional fighters that have went... gone in less time than CM Punk did was why I was like, okay, I pressed my boy. Two minutes? That's not bad. Hmm? That's longer than fucking <clears throat> Bart Gunn lasted with Butterbean, so. Yeah. True, true. But uh, CM Punk says only his career has only failed slightly better than Butterbeans after that point. <laughs> Woof. Woof, I do. No, he's going to be on some <clears throat> weird show, I think, that involves, like, a bunch of different countries, and each country has a different... Hu- I don't know what the fuck it is. I stopped paying attention. The minute I was like, this is And then you're trying to find... Fight, well, you're... You're trying to find Carmen Sandiego, so... CM Punk just looking into the ring and he's just like, hello, gumshoes, I'm drug free for life. Could you find where the cocaine is? Not near me. Uh, me. Hello, uh, I'm Phil Brooks. Do you like The Walking Dead? Oh, wow. <laughs> we can talk. I just, I just, I just realized. Yeah. I just realized the best way to sneak CM Punk into All In is to have him pull like the evolution of the Barry character because <laughs> it was it was Kenny Omega at the Ring of Honor 16th anniversary. No one will suspect when all of a sudden when all of a sudden CM Punk GT or Barry GTS is somebody in the yeah. ring and then pulls the bear mask off and it's Punk. Whole mm-hmm. crowd screams at once. Actually, I almost want to buy the ticket just for the possibility that that might be a thing. Yeah. I want somebody to come out in the Barry costume, hit a GTS, and show it not to be punk almost. Now, here's the problem I'm foreseeing in trying to hit the GTS in the Barry costume, which is you pick <laughs> them up at a fireman's carry and you have to pop them over your head. You basically are gonna have to fucking like military press them over the berry head carefully and then drop them into the GTS. No, the hair, the hat, the head comes off whenever you pop the person. Like they like bring it off for you. That way you don't have to. So like you hit it and then you look up and it's it's like whoever his face it oh, is. Oh, okay. And then that's the pop. The oh, whole crowd's like, that's yeah. I feel like that would give it away. By though. the way, Kenny Omega achieved. Yeah, that'd be the point. Uh, Kenny Omega lived several of my life life's dreams in uh, in the span of two minutes at the ROH yeah. 16th anniversary. Uh, he uh, so what what he did he push Cody down, threw a bear head at him, <laughs> uh, V triggered Cody in the face, and then kissed uh, Brandy Rhodes. Yeah, that's like at least two, three things on my bucket list right there. I was hoping that um, wait, is just wearing a bear costume and in, in front of like a bunch of screaming fans one of your bucket list items? 
No, throwing one of the mascot head at a person oh, okay. uh, is on one of my bucket list things. Kneeing Cody Rhodes in the face is another one, and kissing his wife is a third. Can I just say, All I don't respectable. know how to say it, not weird, but Kenny Omega looks adorable in a bear costume. I was like, oh. <laughs> I base the I bit went, where he like put his the bit where he put his 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 fists on his hips and like did the pose. Mm -hmm. Oh was, yeah, yeah, beautiful. No, no, I want. I hope there's like some weird like Sid from Toy Story level kid out there who has taken one of their like sister's teddy bears and then their custom Kenny Omega toy and then ripped the head off and glued it onto the bear and just oh, put it God. back in their sister's bed. Yeah. By the way, speaking of uh, speaking of Barry, the drug free Barry, you know who's not drug free? Jeff Hardy. Oh no! Oh, ouch! Oof! Ah ha! Woof! Oh, you, you, right in the gut. Was it? Can oh. I got transitions on this show? I got transitions here. <laughs> can I just say my favorite thing about that is the fact that Matt, in reply to the whole situation, was just like, "Ever since the seven deities have come upon me, my vessel has been clean of all alcohol, drugs, and other substances." Stay woke. Like he just went on a rant, and I was like. He stayed in character and also dissed his brother for driving while under while impaired. Well, no, he also brought attention away from his brother yeah. by being a fucking weirdo <laughs> on Twitter, and that that's what like that's I I'm pretty sure that was his goal, mm -hmm. uh, and good on him. He's mm -hmm. a good. He is an excellent brother. Uh, you can say you have to you have to say that about the Hardy family. They are like very close knit. Yeah. Uh, Can I just, you did you see the video? Don't count that time that I think one of them burned the other one's house down during that WWE feud. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you see the video that Jeff apparently posted earlier in that day of like someone watching one of his music videos, but they were holding it while steering a car? And I'm like, you know, that's probably not, that's not good timing. That's not good timing for right before you get caught driving while impaired. <laughs> that's that's probably gonna come up in the court case. It's like, he wasn't even on drugs. He was just really enjoying this new Parak Swayajan fucking video. I mean, he was also, like, three times the legal limit. But Wait, what? Okay, I've that. not heard what he what happened. I just know he got caught driving <laughs> while well impaired. He blew a point two five. Point two five. did you say? Yeah. Yeah. I can beat that. Anyways. <laughs> You gotta work to get that drunk. Mm. That take it. Takes that doesn't effort. just happen on its own. Yeah, it takes effort. It takes having like one of the monitors with you. Like, point two zero. That's not enough. That's not enough. I can go harder than that. Keep drinking. <laughs> like, uh, Daddy didn't raise no quitter. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Hardy, he's not happy. Papa, Papa Hardy. Hardy. I really wish I really wish Matt and Jeff's father was like as part of as a part of their wrestling as the as Nick and Matt Jackson's oh, was. Yeah. Like like he just shows up at like the Hardy compound and shit. He's like, hey guys, what's up? Is that gold dust? That was one of my favorite fucking bits from BTE recently. I actually no, boy? I think the opening to the latest BTE may be my favorite thing they've ever done. Where fucking Hangman just runs in and screams at Joey Ryan's dick for a few minutes. Come on, then I'm gonna bang your wife because she knows I'm not a penis pretender. <laughs> oh man, God. And then, then, then cut to Nick zooming in on her and her just being there, like, yeah, maybe, yeah, like, probably. <laughs> but you know what we never pretend about, guys. We never pretend that to we... not be shills. Yes, yeah, we never pretend that we're not shills. Which is why I'm going to tell you go over to merch.aloadofpurebs.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Merch.aloadofpurebs.com. It's the only website where you can go to support these good fight boys right mm. here. We've got shirts for all your favorite JWF superstars. We got shirts for Blake Tanner. We got shirts for the Lumberjack. We got shirts for, uh, I was about to say eye to eye, but they're, they're not around anymore. We got shirts for all your favorites. And then, of course, we got fight boys <laughs> shirts over there. All at merch. Dot a load of pure BS dot com. Now, what the fuck are we going to tweet? You, you know who else's shirt we have there? What? Who else? You know, you, I was going to say, you know who else's shirt we have yeah. there? Chuck Taylor's. Chuck Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a Chuck Taylor shirt. 
damn, you've got those fucking transitions. I, I, we just need to change it to Dust Watch Forever, and then the Forever needs to be in like the Batman Forever font. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you hear it said in your mind, it's just the Ultimate Warrior going Forever. No, no, no. And then we also see. See, mine always goes to Sandlot. The <laughs> with me, it was uh, Terry Fun. Forever. Forever. By the way, by the way, guys, I want you to. I want you to know, I have updates uh, on Dust Watch. Um, Chuck Taylor's had a great week in his career. Yeah. Uh, killing, killing Trent was really just a, a, the best thing for him. Yeah. In that VWG match. <laughs> Because he, uh, he, like I said, he, as we as we previously mentioned, he took over uh, Trent Spot in the New Japan Cup and that whole tour. Uh, he was also asked to do commentary. Yeah. On New Japan World. Holy which shit. Which I haven't gotten to listen to yet. I'm like a show behind. Oh, they've but they've announced the uh, what their like WrestleMania All Access is going to be for All In, and it is called Starcast. That's... Yeah, why would you not name it something like that? Yep. Well, there are live podcasts there, which means, Dylan, when you're there, I'm going to need you to just hang around that place and be like, if you need anybody next year, when you do this again, call the Fight Boys. At which point, Cody Rhodes just stares at you <laughs> like, the fuck is a that. Fight Boy? Exactly. Yeah. Well, That's no, why I'm not going to be doing Cody that. Cody stares at you for a second. He says, it's spelled with a Z, right? <laughs> 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 You're like, yeah. He's like, I wouldn't put you on the show if it wasn't. Um, so what should we what should we talk to Chuck about this week? It's been a while since we've tweeted. He did just he did just main event a New Japan pay per view like mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah, like he main evented a pay per view. Yo, he talked about how he thought he was in some kind of like like dying dying moments dream because of how much better his career got in the last year. Yo, bud, congrats on main eventing that Jap J Japan show. Not even New Japan, just Jap Japan show. My co-host tells me that's cool. You sure? You, you sure? You, you want to get? You want to get more offensive? You sure? You just want to go on to call it that that Japan wrestling show? Oh no! <laughs> I thought you were gonna say cut the A N out of Japan, <laughs> and then just like go really bad with it. Yo, bud. No, 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 Scotty. I'm not from Alabama. I know the line. <laughs> Yo, bud. Congrats on main eventing that Japan show. My co-host tells me that's neat. Anyways, retweet and follow. I think that's that one's pretty solid. Hashtag Dustwatch20. <laughs> yes, we come we come off as we come off as ignorant and and presumptuous at the same time. Okay, so yeah, that's us. Yeah, exactly. I don't Two see the problem here, Dylan. All right, there we go. The problem is that my that. name is associated with this show, and now my likeness is associated with this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dylan, you were all in from the start. You were all you were balls deep. Yeah, from and then the... you two backed out. So guess where we are now? Oh man, I also Fair like point. that. I went to Twitter and it was just like trending now. Two oh five live. Stephen Hawking's dead. WWE makes Mads challenge. I'm like, well, I don't think we could talk about that on Fight Boys, but oh well. Oh man. So I know it happened like a few weeks ago, but have you seen the fucking footage of Callahan just decking Eddie Edwards with that baseball bat? I mean, that happened literally months ago. Like that happened back at the taping. Here, where I live. Well, see, no, no, I don't know why In it's come up Orlando. a lot. Well, I guess it's because it just, sh they just showed it on air. Yeah, it aired, like, yeah, it aired, like, three weeks ago. And then there was this giant thing about, like, uh, with Cornette. And then I think, I think Chris Hero, or Cash, I'm sorry, Cassius Ono. Yeah. Uh, called him out. And then there was this, just this whole just shit show about it. I feel, even though by that point it had been over a month, and then, <laughs> like, I'm sure Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan had talked it over. Management had talked it over. Yeah. Like everything was like cool and and collected. And then everybody decided like, hey, let's just shit on Sammy Callahan and call him like every name under the yeah. sun for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Meanwhile, like like people in every company haven't fucked up majorly. Yeah. Would you like me to show you all the chair shots that that Triple H has laid on people? Yeah. Or the or the I surrender match between uh, the Rock and Mick Foley. 
Meanwhile, if you could make it more than six minutes into that match without feeling uncomfortable. Me- meanwhile, Ooh. Callahan and Eddie Edwards are just like, man, we're going to sell so many fucking t-shirts because of this. Like Callahan has made one that's like <laughs> Cleveland Slugger or something like that. And then uh, I know Eddie Edwards has made one that's like the bat didn't kill me or something. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> they are using this to the best of their abilities. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of Sam McCallion and everything, how, how how do you feel about the Impact versus Lucha Underground show? Scotty? I feel uncomfortable about it. I feel uncomfortable because. Are you ready to watch Johnny Mundo wrestle against Johnny Impact? <laughs> <laughs> and and Taya Valkyrie facing Taya Valkyrie, and yeah. then uh, Sammy Callahan versus I think it's like Jeremiah Crane. <laughs> Oh, oh to think shit, of I forgot about and that then, name. And then Brian Cage versus Brian Cage in a cage. Has Sammy Callahan <laughs> ever had a name in a big, or in a larger promotion that did not sound like a Tim Burton character? My name is Solomon Crow. Of course it is, Sammy. Maybe, tr- maybe instead of trying to come up with uh, good names, how about you try to aim at a chair proper? Uh... <laughs> I do feel bad about that, because, like, I looked at the footage, and you can see he's, like, eh, like, he's, eh, like, just at the point where he wasn't hitting the chair, and it was gonna glance off. Like, if he had just moved a little bit forward, it would have been fine. But everyone's like, no, he blatantly hit him in the face. I'm like, no, he didn't. He missed. You can see the bat, like, hit it and then whiff (laughs) off. People are dumb. People are, people are dumb. Um, that's yeah, all that's I a- have to add for that five minutes of me not talking. <laughs> but he's like, I'm just gonna. What would you like to talk? I'm gonna sit back and just enjoy these. Like, what would you like to talk about? Yeah, but uh, what do you want to talk I don't know. I. Anything interesting in the world of wrestling for Blake? The Plaid Man. Taylor? I've literally <laughs> not been able to watch wrestling Taylor. for the last two weeks. Blake the Plaid Man. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Flat, 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 I like how that implies that you don't know what plaid is. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, someone is plaid? You ever heard this plaid shirt? Like, people are holding up different, like, cloth swatches. Like, is this plaid? Is this? I don't know what. I just wear, I wear things. He loves plaid. plaid. He always they wears it, but he doesn't be know. Plaid. I I sat on Scotty. Are you the neighbor where like we don't see because because Blake and I can't see your face right now, so it's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, <Hold on>. Wilson. <laughs> I'm just like it's just my head over the pillow. Like, hey, what's up, guys? How you doing, neighbor? No, I think I would be the Al Borland, and then no, because you're too tall. You would poke over the fence. I was gonna say you <laughs> would be the. No, you're the Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I would oh, never, man. I would never, uh, I would not force that upon my greatest enemy. Why would you do that to our friend <laughs> Dylan? Wait, just force him to be the Jonathan I condemn you to the fa- fate of being Jonathan <laughs> Taylor <laughs> Thomas. How dare you. The JTT Specifically having to relive his acting career. <laughs> Oh. I sentence you. No, don't do it. I have fun starring you. in no. Jingle to Jonathan all the way. Taylor or that Thomas. Oh Christmas. God. So, Ric uh. Flair is gonna be in a movie, and it makes me so happy to say the name of it. I can't even remember the full title, and unfortunately, I can't pull it up because I have video screens all over my room right now. I feel like Big Brother, but I do remember two simple words, and that is, in fact, Uncle Steamroller. And uh, <laughs> yeah. it's about like Ric Flair is used to a different kind of steam. Yeah, but it's apparently it's about oh, like God. a small. It originates from a town in Ohio. Yeah. It's like a small time. Did wrestling... you guys see that? Yep. Blake, what? This guy, I'm would you cutting like to out this real sentence? bad. So just just go on without me. I'm dying. Okay, Blake's just like guys. I'm gone. I've disappeared. I'm in the ether now. Um, no, it's apparently about, like, this small-town wrestling federation, and this guy coming back, and the Ric Flair owns the federation, and I'm just like, oh, god, this sounds- And apparently the name of the- one of the guys is Uncle Steamroller, 
And I'm like, fuck, this is a movie about the JWF. We need to sue some people. You're my Uncle Steamroller. Welcome back. Blake, Blake, I... I... B Blake, I need you to know that that Ric Flair is is uh, infringing on your uh, your character. Yeah, Ric Flair one? comes out known as Captain Tibbs. Uh, clearly, clearly Tibbs. Uh, Ric Flair's my character. Clearly going to be the crazy owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah my yeah. care. I don't understand what you're talking about, Captain T. Uh, the Captain Tibbs is he's his own man. Yeah, Captain Tibbs is. Is his he own really? Dude. Yeah, he's his own dude. Yeah. Like, do you think Silver Spoon uh -huh. is me? No, I just sound like him. I could uh -huh. do a hell of an impression of him, but I mean, other than that. Uh, uh huh. Mm hmm. And do you think the Dylan is you? That's not you? You're just like, wait, hold on. That's not right. Wait. <laughs> That's not. Hmm. Meanwhile, in our chat oh, okay, on good, Twitch, good. Well, Captain, have fun <laughs> Captain going Tibbs is going crazy, just yelling, I'm in the internet! I'm Captain I Tibbs. am the internet. I don't know why I gave Tibbs as Alex Jones' voice. <laughs> I am the internet! I, don't, I, think... I am Tibbs! Oh. Uh, yeah, you... Tibbs has got a good point. We're both we're not we're both in different places at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just... You can tell it's been a slow week when we spend like five minutes riffing on Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> and fucking Tibbs chat. We're just sitting here this like, is... yeah, fucking Randy Orton fucked our prediction. There was only like, there's only like a, a string of, of major pay per views and like events across wrestling, but like, you know, yep. WrestleMania is not here yet. Uh, and everybody knows that shit's not really going to happen until that weekend. Yeah. So the official like... hotel for All In um, started taking reservations, sold out immediately, released more rooms. And those sold out immediately, too. Yeah, I was real sad I couldn't get in on that. Yeah. Mainly because I thought there were going to be multiple of us, so I didn't buy it right away. Oh. But, uh... I'm sorry. <laughs> Atlanta, Look. fancy business. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If... Yeah. I'm going to drive through Atlanta on my way up there. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sure to... Uh, I'm going to be sure to hire some bikers to find you a Dragon Con and beat the shit out no. of you. <laughs> You just like look at Liesel and you're just like, hey, I need you to roll down your window and just hold out a bird this whole next 30 minute stretch. I mean, and then you guys get like caught in traffic and she's like, do I have to keep holding it up? <laughs> yes, you do. We're still in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, you just call up your good buddy, apparently DDP. He comes to our hotel room. He kind of he knocks it down with a yoga move and kicks our asses. Diamond cutter. Monkeys. Diamond cutter. I feel like he DDP stalks us like he stalks that, the Undertaker. He used to get life. that good cravat in. They get that good cravat into it. That's how you get the. That's how you get the solid diamond. Oh yeah, yeah. No, Scotty. If I if I wanted somebody to beat you up, I'm I'm sure I could just like pay your dad. <laughs> <laughs> He'd do it. He'd fucking he do would. it. I feel like there's a slew of... Hey, Mr. Moore. Hey, listen. I know you and I aren't on the best of terms, but I feel like this hundred dollars. And the and the uh, and the proposition of you beating the shit out of your son would really turn this relationship around. Hey, what's Freight Train up to nowadays? I was going to say there's a <laughs> slew of indie wrestlers in Atlanta in Georgia you could bring in. I'm just like, is that fucking Scott Steiner? Oh, he brought me some shonies. That's nice. What did you bring me? I brought you some, a meal of burger with a side of punch, and then he just like fucking decks me. Honestly, I'll just get I'll just get Luke Gallows. He's probably sick of your face. Yeah, he's just like, what the fuck are you doing, you son of a bitch? This... He was about as tall as me. He came and he was very upset with you. Came to my wrestling school that I keep promoting, but nobody seems to be enrolling in. <laughs> Blake, do you want to oh. just do that for a year? <laughs> we just enroll in Gallows' wrestling school? <laughs> It'll be... Who is, who, who is we, fat man? Shh. We'll get si we'll get we'll Jeez. go full Simon Miller on this shit. We'll just fucking both go to wrestling school. And then JWF becomes real. Whoa, guys, hold on. What's the problem with most indie wrestling? They only run one show a month. They can't fucking promote like full storylines that easily because people forget by the time the next month rolls around. 
We got a weekly show. We can do this. <laughs> yeah. I believe in I believe in you, Scotty. Go for it. <laughs> We're just like we just signed Chuck Taylor to a lucrative contract. It includes uh following us on Twitter and not much else. Any appearances? No. Yeah, we, uh, no. we threw in a bag of funyuns <laughs> uh, just to try and keep him happy. <laughs> no, I love that we just keep every time we see Chuck, we give him something and it keeps getting like the first time we gave him a shirt. The second time, it's just like, oh, we gave you this signed 8x10 of the Fight Boys. Third time, here's a fucking bag of Funyuns. Follow us already. Come on. Do it. <laughs> well, one I feel like we need to... No, I feel like it needs to go the opposite direction. Like, we just need to step it up every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think at one point... I mean, you know he's going to eventually be in one of those states where certain things are legal, right? We just need to get him a big old bag of weed. That means we have to go to the state as so, well. So you got him the shirt. Scotty, Scotty, I need we'll you to give it. him a pair of sweatpants with his face on it. <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking, like, young bucks with it down the side where it says killing the business, except it says please follow us, and then Chuck's face on, like, the thigh. The other yeah. leg, yeah. Well, it's yeah, gotta yeah. have our. It's gotta have the Twitter handle too. Oh yeah, no, the other <laughs> leg says at Fight Boys Joe, and then across the. No, no, no. Even better, you, 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 you. No, you, you get him a pair of sweatpants. It's just his face and his Twitter handle down it. Yeah. Then you get another one for Trent. That's the opposite. <laughs> I was gonna say on ours, the bat, the ass says with a Z on it, and he's just like, oh well, good. If it's spelled with a Z, <laughs> we're down. Uh, all right, spell with a Z. I got you. I got you. That's fine. Uh, by the way, by the way, that that picture, that picture of uh of the, of the eight by ten is, is that our is that our picture on Twitter? I feel like that needs to be our picture. On Twitter. <laughs> like our profile photo, just just Trent and Chuck's like smiling ass with to the fight boys. Yeah, but with the yeah with the yeah but but like zoomed in on the part that says with a Z. Oh, <laughs> you know, just to let people know what we're about. Oh man, you know what else we're about, Dylan? shilling still but this time about patreon.com slash fight boys that's right ladies and gentlemen patreon.com slash fight boys is the website where you can go support these fight boys monetarily and of course we got perks for you all relating to that amazing birmingham alabama based professional wrestling organization the jwf for just one dollar ladies and gentlemen we'll bring you into the jwf if we need a wrestler you will be that wrestler and we will promptly job you out you will lose very quickly not much will be known about you but if you want more than that if you want to be like guy fietti like scott Moore, like the greats if you want to be a jwf mid carter then five dollars over at patreon.com slash fight boys and you will become a jwf mid carter but if you want more than that if you want to see blake tanner destroyed at your own hands then thirty dollars at what no it's nothing $30 at patreon.com slash fight boys and we don't know how we don't know when we don't know in what way but you will become a JWF champion ladies and gentlemen which means guys it's now time to cut it on over to everybody's favorite commentators Silver Spoon and Captain Tibbs for another episode of JWF I, actually I think um what? I think Captain Tibbs his internet is out also he's broken several bones I think he's gonna be out this week oh is Captain Tibbs out this week He's he's oh, very um What oh no, what do we do? I don't know. What Dylan, are we gonna do? You do? know anybody? Um has Honeypot's jaw uh yeah, like Honeypot healed did commentary from the last, last week. attack. Or didn't do commentary, he did yeah. like an interview. Uh, yeah, Honeypot's a strange. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he got murdered in that one. So I, I think he might no, be alive. Honeypot um, is also gone, Dylan. Dylan, <laughs> put me in, coach. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm ready to play <laughs> today. Uh, uh, have you considered trying to contact Roman Reigns? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to JWF Monday Night War, where um, uh, things seem kind of empty. I'm not gonna lie, there's not... I mean, wait. Hello? Why, why are you forgetting about me? 
Hello? Listen, I know I'm a little person, but this is very discriminatory. Who let you in here? You're the janitor. Why are you... Well, I guess it... Come on in, I guess. We don't have many people. Scotty Moore's off doing something. Blake Tanner's off in fucking Aerodondacks doing some charity work. Tibbs is dead. So come on in, little man. I'm, he's not dead. He, si he signed my paycheck last week. It was very, it was very hard to read. Very hard to read, uh, but he is uh, he is doing he's on a man, I believe is is the is the saying. And uh, no, all right, no. so little man, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, is uh, Silverback Monsoon. All right, Silverback, good to, good to have you here, Mister Silverback. Uh, so of course I assume that you've been keeping up with the JWF. You've been keeping up with all these great goings on that's happened in recent weeks. We of course have had the Dylan who, of course, viciously attacked Captain Tibbs last week, which, of course, is why he was out. Now, uh, what did you think about that attack, Silverback? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Tibbs has been laying off a few payments. I'm, I'm glad somebody uh, somebody broke his legs. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess that uh, you may not be the only person who feels good about that because, of course, the Dylan joined me earlier today on the Rusty Spoon, my patented trademark interview show and uh he had some interesting things to say about captain tibbs let's have a listen so dylan i just want to welcome you to the rusty spoon and i'd like to ask you about captain tibbs see you've definitely had issues with him in the past you've definitely said quite a few things against him and the jwf as a whole but you know these past few weeks it's like something different something's changed in you i, I don't understand well, it's uh, it's good to be here in this room full of old pizza boxes that you call a set. But no, still something something has changed. See, I've I've come to a realization lately. I realize that while I've been a bad person, and I've I've come to that. I like to beat people up. I like to insult the company, get a rise out of the fans and the other wrestlers, get a bigger reaction from them than even Blake Tanner does in the main event. See, I realize that while I pretend at times to be a bad person, Tibbs is a bad person. See, Tibbs is a piece of shit, and I'm tired of dealing with him. See, last week, I had Blake Tanner pinned. The referee counted 2-3 in the middle, of, or counted to three in that wrestling ring. And then Tibbs walks up from the table where you and him sit on, I don't even know, a stack of, I don't know, milk crates? I, they're, they're actually, it's barely a table. It's like two two-by-fours. You know a different story. And he comes up and he restarts the match, and then I lose. Now I'm at a Wrestlepalooza. And I have to tell you that I'm getting really... Tired. And that was the last straw. I'm tired of having to deal with that crazy old well, well, man. Well, Dylan, I, I understand. I, 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 respect for I, I, I hear what you're saying, but you have to agree what the referee did. That was a bad call. Blake had his hand on the ropes. It was a legal rope break. The referee didn't catch it, and that's why Tibbs reversed it. It wasn't anything you did. It was It was illegal. I don't care if it was fair. I don't care if it was right. It was a three count. How many matches has anybody else lost in here due to interference or due to something not being right? Tibbs let those slide just fine. But all of a sudden, when it's me, all of a sudden Tibbs has, you know, has to come stick his nose in it. Hell, even if I would pin Blake in the middle of the ring, I'm sure he would have found a reason to restart the match. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of him. I'm tired of this place. I'm going to start making his life the living hell that he's made mine the last couple of months. I don't really care what it takes or what I have to do, but I assure you, he's going to see the error of his ways, even if he has to see him from a hospital bed for the rest of his life. So, Silverback, I mean, that was... I don't know. Do you think Dylan crossed a line with that? I mean, talking about putting Tibbs in a hospital bed, that's still the owner of this company. That's still someone who deserves some respect. Well, I mean, that's uh, that's what Mr. Tibbs has been keeping his mama at for the last six years. So, you know, I, I mean, you know, now they can maybe be in like the same hospital room. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it'd be nice. Right. Well, 
Speaking of people who have changed, another person who has changed in recent weeks, of course, is Scotty Moore, the number one contender to the JWF World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, Monsoon, it seemed like after he won the Regal Rumble, something changed in Scotty. He changed to something completely different, something I had never seen before. I mean, did you ever expect something like that out of him? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know quite know what you mean. I mean, I've seen gingers before. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, like I said, Scotty Moore, he's been off today. He, uh, he had to go do some business or something like that, he was telling me. But he did send in a video. Apparently, he said he wanted to congratulate Blake Tanner for his victory last week. So let's roll the video. Greetings, JWF Universe. It is I, your friendly neighborhood, Scotty Moe, coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. Working on podcast stuff, big business things. Ah, you guys wouldn't understand. But, you know, I just knew I'd be kicking myself if I didn't let everyone know just how proud I was of Blake Tanner for his match last week. I mean, he took the Dylan down, you know, after the Dylan beat the hell out of him and pinned him to the mat, but you know, that's, that's, all, that's neither here nor there. It's all technicalities, right? You see, the important thing is that Blake Tanner kept our match at Wrestlepalooza pure. He kept it brother versus brother. Because as much as Blake Tanner wants to say he's not, I still think he's my brother. I still think he's my best friend. I still love him, and that's why it makes me laugh when I hear Blake Tanner come out and talk about how much he wanted this match, about how much he wanted, how much he craved to face me in the main event of Wrestlepalooza, and yet, despite all that, at the Regal Rumble, when Silver Spoon turned to Blake Tanner and asked, well, who do you think you want to face at the pay-per-view? Blake Tanner responded, Well, I think anyone would be a great opponent to face. It'd be amazing. Anyone, Blake? Anyone. You would face any you'd face Canada Charlie. You'd face you'd face Johnny Bananas of all people. Really? No, no, no. I know the truth. I know the truth of what you wanted to say because I know you wanted so desperately to say, I hope Scotty Moore wins. That way I can go to Wrestlepalooza and main event it against my best friend in the whole world. But that thought scared you, Blake. I know that thought scared you because it was obvious. It was obvious to everyone in the entire arena that night that I was winning. I was the only logical option. And it scared you because you also knew of something else that was obvious. You knew that it was obvious that if I won the Regal Rumble, I would walk in to Wrestlepalooza and beat your ass and take the JWF title away from you. So, instead of telling the truth when Silver Spoon talked to you, you just said, anyone. Well, unfortunately, Blake, you're not dealing with just anyone for this match. You're dealing with a man who's willing to do whatever it takes. A man who works 24-7 sending in videos to this dumb wrestling company when I should be making money like I always do. As a man who quite obviously is going to leave Wrestlepalooza as the JWF World Heavyweight Champion. Well, damn, Scotty Moore. I mean, that was some, some amazing words from him. I mean, obviously he seemed busy, but he also did not seem pleased with Blake Tanner. He still says that he thinks he's his friend, but that's not what I'm getting from. What do you think? I mean, I mean, sometimes you gotta, you got you gotta beat your friend up to prove that you're friends. Uh, I, I was in a gang once where I had to, I had to shank oh. a guy to death, but, but I, I stick with, I think oh, we're still okay, close. Okay, so well, oh, you're still close to, he's dead, but I mean, all right, <laughs> sure. No, no, we, we, we still okay, right. Well, all right. But speaking of shocking things, 
Monsoon, I want to talk about another shocking thing that happened at the expiration date pay-per-view. When the Brunch Boys were facing off in the ring and the lights dimmed and The Undertaker appeared in the middle of the ring, taking out Brunch Boy Baron Corbin, apparently sent by Vince McMahon to get Baron Corbin back. I don't know what it was, but The Undertaker has he, debuted he is, in the he, JWF, and it scared me to death. What do you think? He, he is he's a very, very spooky old man. I, I mean, Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is a very spooky old man. The Undertaker, Undertaker seems nice. Seems like he, he likes... I, I heard he likes motorcycles, and, and they go from... That's right, and of course, the rat sentient. I mean... The Rat Sension were at the center of all of this. I mean, Tibbs suspended them for 60 days, kicking them out of Wrestlepalooza. But, of course, last week, as we saw, the Rat Sension didn't take too kindly to that. Staging a sit-in and refusing to leave until Captain Tibbs granted I, I, them I, a match at Wrestlepalooza and revoked, that, uh, revoked their suspension. And that led to this match, where the Rat Sension are taking on the JWF World Tag Team Champions, the Brunch Boys, in what is absolutely set to be a vicious match. It looks like got. I I respect I respect Rat uh, uh right to uh, to protest and uh, and to uh, to lobby for their jobs. That's a very important part of America. All right. Well, looks like this match is another important part is the start off of this match is Guy Fieri starting off against the Rat Boy Connor and ooh, Rat Boy shoving Guy. Looks like Guy's standing his ground, but he doesn't look happy about that. Baron, or... Uh, uh, I, I, I believe he got hit in the man titty. That can sometimes make right, some it looks like uh, a little bit of cockiness from the Rat Boy, but Guy, ooh, returns that cockiness, shoving Connor into his turnbuckle, where Victor makes a quick tag. Now, of course, we all know Connor is the mouth of the group, but I think Victor is the man who really makes it work. Ooh, but I don't think he'll make it work trying to shove Guy Fieri down, but Guy Fieri, he ain't even moving out of that. Victor bouncing off the ropes, trying he's to hit him again, a, but Guy remaining stoic in the middle of the ring. I mean, you're a little man. You're a little man like Victor. I mean, how would you even try to take down a guy like Guy Fieri? Uh, I, I have found that uh, that stabbing people oh, well, helps, all right. helps Well, of course. Oh, and it looks like Victor trying to build up some speed, bouncing off one rope, then the other, back and forth, back and forth, and he rushes Fieri. Oh, it hits a big hurricane rana, tossing Fieri into the corner. And it looks like Victor is getting wound up, building up speed, rushing him for a Bronco Buster. And it looks like he's trying to hit a knee trembler, but oh wait! As he bounced against that rope, Baron pulled down the rope, causing Victor to fly to the outside. Wise move from uh, the veteran brunch boy Baron Corbin. Guy Fieri smirking, tagging in his partner, who jumps off and it's a ooh, big double axe handle onto Victor. And it looks like the Rat Boy is not enjoying what they're doing to his tag team partner. Rushing around the ring trying to save Victor. But, ooh, Guy Fieri responds with a clothesline taking out Connor. I mean, that's all, that is all. That is the sign of a good tag team partner. I'll tell you that right now. You got to have, gotta have your friends back even, uh, even if you have stabbed them. That's right. And it looks like Baron getting rolled into, rolling Victor into the ring goes for a pin. But, ooh, Victor counting out it too. Oh, and it looks like Brunch Boy is calling for it. The Brunch of Days. That devastating move we've seen take down many men before. But Oh, Monsoon. The lights are out. That gong is playing, and we know what that means. He's here. He's here. It's The Undertaker, and he's grabbed Baron Corbin, hitting a big choke slam on him. Guy Fieri rushing into the ring upset, but ooh, Undertaker clotheslining Guy Fieri to the outside. And it looks like he's actually just picked up Victor's body, laying him over Brunch Boy, hitting the one, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the Rat Sension are going to wrestle Palooza to face the Brunch Boys, but it wasn't without the help of the Undertaker, I'll tell you that right now. I, I believe that probably should have been disqualification. I'm very surprised that uh, they didn't notice the large man in the ring. I, with the hat, I don't know. Uh, I think maybe Shibata, Shibata, our faithful referee, was terrified, unable to react. I don't know what it was, but the Rats engine have won. You, you do, you do, you, you do know that Shibata's legally blind, right? That may explain a lot of problems we have in this company. I'll tell you that right now. But not, it looks like he, he also, he, he also doesn't, doesn't know what it is he. He he's doing here. He uh, I hand I hand him the shirt when he gets here. He he thinks he works at a 7-Eleven. All right, but wait. 
Oh, looks like the the rat sentient rolling out of the ring quickly because the Undertaker is still here and it looks like he is setting up for a tombstone pile driver. Oh, poor Brunch Boy just writhing in pain. He doesn't know what's waiting him, but wait. Oh, Monsoon, it's him. It's him. It is the God of Law, the God of the Sea, and the God of the JWF. It's Momoa Curry. He has rushed. I, I thought he was retired. What? 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 I, 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 I had his cake. I, I, I handed it to him. He, he had a retirement party. I think party. the retirement will keep him away if someone's trying to take out the JWF like The Undertaker. And it looks like Momoa Curry standing face to face, two behemoths in the ring, staring each other down. Oh, and Momoa is looking up at that big, beautiful Wrestlepalooza sign, nodding his head. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's a challenge if I've ever seen it. And The Undertaker looking up and returning that shake of the head. I get, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what just happened, but I think I think we may have a match at Wrestlepalooza as the god of the JWF, Momoa Curry, fights for the JWF against the dead man, the American badass, The Undertaker. I mean, Monsoon, that's... I, I hope The Undertaker brings his, brings his broom broom. Uh, that would be very exciting. Monsoon, let me tell you something. That is an absolutely amazing development for Wrestlepalooza. That means we now have two matches confirmed. Three, actually. We have the Rat Sension versus the Brunch Boys. We have Blake Tanner versus Scotty Moore. We have Momoa Curry versus The Undertaker. And who knows how these matches are going to develop in the coming weeks. But I guess the only way to find out is to tune in next time on JWF Monday Night War. So, boys, it's been an episode... The episode of JWF was so hot and fiery, I had to take my jacket off, and that's totally not because I'm under really hot ring lights. But the important <laughs> question is, what did you learn this week, Dylan? I uh, I I learned that you guys are uh, you guys are all out. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Blake, Dude, what did you I'm learn? Sorry. Well, I learned that John Cena's actual WrestleMania match is going to be a blue dog on a pole match <laughs> versus Steve Burns. And I learned that when my phone is about to dead, this episode has a lot of fucking... This show has a lot of uh, empty spots of silence because I can't figure yep. out what to talk about. Anyways, Dylan can when be When your found phone is about to dead. Phone's about to dead. Uh, Dylan mm -hmm. can be found on Twitter at SexyChuckyT. Blake, where can they find you? You can find me at Blake A. Tanner on Twitter. You can find me on all of the other wonderful, the only other podcasts that I do on the BS Network, actually. A load of BS with my buddy Scotty. And you can also find me at the Darkroom Vidya, the Darkroom V-I-D-Y-A on YouTube. And you can Boo. find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S-C-O-T-T-Y-E-M-O. Buy my books on Amazon. There's Quizzle Corp. Quizzle Corp Risen and, of course, the brand new BS Versus the gods, make sure to pick that up. It's me and Blake as we fight Grecian gods and all sorts of different affair like that. And then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, make sure, like Blake said, to check out all the other shows mm -hmm. we do. Opposite Attractions, the show where me and my buddy Jim try to build our own theme park. Of course, a load of BS where me and Blake just kind of are assholes for an hour. All that great stuff. Make sure to donate to the Patreon, do all that good stuff. Make sure that to other podcast. Other podcast, fuck it. Uh, it where you and Blake are assholes for an hour. <laughs> and then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to uh, pick up some merch. I'm Actually, all of the merch that we've been making for JWF is really exciting. And I'm making, like, three brand new shirts for Wrestlepalooza. So get everything you can while you can, nice. ladies and gentlemen. And as always, you can find us at a load of pure BS. Dot com. Buy our merch at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Donate to the Patreon. Find us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> And remember to follow us on Twitter, Chuck Taylor, because when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life! <laughs>